if you think that you are too old or your hair is too thin or too short for some fancy updos, forget about it, ladies. We can do this. And in this video, you're gonna see how older women can do some great updos with a little bit of, of effort. And we don't have to keep those arms up there for 20 minutes at a time. Easy peasy, stay tuned. You'll love this. Point where I'm gonna show you how to do these things quickly, easily, with just one or two props, and you've got a great hairdo. And remember, if you have thin hair, ladies, don't think that you're left behind in all this. We can do it. I have thin hair, and I'm showing you some pictures from, from the old days, two or three years ago, how thin my hair really was. When you've lost a lot of it, like I have over the years, my hair has just disappeared little by little, as have my eyebrows, and used to have great thick hair. Here's the secret. What you can do with a few secrets and a couple of hacks, over 60, don't be left out on this, ladies. We can do this. Now, before we begin the hair tutorial, I'm just going to show you a few things that we use. And I'm not going to talk about the shampoo, the conditioner, the mousse, the hair oil, and all the rest of it, because quite frankly, I don't think they're that important in the uh, one, two, threes of the updo hairdo and of getting thin hair to look like it's big, big, big. So what I do rely on big time is my dry shampoo. Now, if you don't like this brand, they say that it's been recalled, but I think they've fixed it and it's back again. I have another one that I use and it's the Clean Freak, not your mother's dry shampoo. Clean Freak, it's all good. They're all good. And, and that's about what I use besides my little brush, which I left in the bathroom. It's just a small bristle brush that I use to do a little back combing. If you don't want to back comb, I can still tell you how to do it with that. But the dry shampoo is a must if you have thin hair. Now, I don't pretend to be one of those women that have the long, gorgeous, thick hair at 80 plus. I don't. I did have it in my younger years, but it started disappearing at about 70, maybe 75, started to thin out. I thought I was done, but then I discovered that I didn't have to give up and I could get back in the game again. So we're ready to begin. Now for my main hairdo, which is the one that I've been wearing lately and which is the one that is the easiest, there are some things that are a must. And <laughs> the big one is this comb. I've told you about this. I've put it in the description box. I will do that again. This is a curved, very extra large hair comb. This is the contraption that goes in the back of the head that holds most of the back up. You push it down. The curve is important and it's a 13 or 12 or 13 long tooth comb, which is about six or seven inches across the top, about four or five on the bottom. And it is my go-to for my summer hairdo, the one I love the most. Now that holds the back up. Now on the other hand, if you're doing a French twist, you use it this way. Now you buy this on Amazon. There's several colors, several different ones, and I will put this in the description box. You get two for $12.95. I can't find the other one. I don't know where it is. Love it. This is the main thing. Now to get the sides up, on this hairdo, the one I'm going to show you today, you need two smaller combs. I prefer the clear because they don't show and they basically loosely hold up the sides of this hairdo. And that's it that I use to do this particular one that, I'm, that you're looking at. Now there's another version of this where I take the whole front and I do it up in a, a kind of a Gibson girl roll and I would once again use these. The other thing that you might want to be using are hair clips. I have my little hand uh, held fan going and it's making my eyes water. I had to put the glasses on to find the hairpins, but this is essential in the summer, putting makeup on. So I hope you don't hear it. 
Anyway, what you also might want to use that help you secure some of these stray hairs are hair pins. All of these things you can get on uh, Amazon in different colors and also bobby pins, which I would use. I love the long ones for some of the, the uh, Gibson girl things to just poke the long bobby pins in. I can't forget what you call those, but those are essential. Now, in the case of fancier hairdos where you might want to use some other aids, I have shown you these and use them. Now, I being a whitehead <laughs> here, I have had a lot of trouble trying to find hair that matches my own hair. I've bought three, four, five different things, ponytails, various other things. I better turn this fan off to stop my eyes watering because my makeup's going. This is absolutely wonderful. I also will put this in the description box below. Three speeds, wonderful. That's it with the eye watering for now. Also, nose watering, side effects of growing old. But this one matched fairly well, and because it was not a main part that showed, sometimes I used this when I did my Gibson Girl. This is wonderful, and believe it or not, I've had this for years, and I just can't find it anymore on Amazon. These are called rats, at least that's what we called them in the old days. But this I would either use this way and make a roll up there, but the way I like to use it is backwards, where you put it down here in the back and it becomes the back Gibson girl hairdo, where I just roll the hair up all across the back. And then in the front, I might like to use maybe the braid to hide the elastic in the front. You could put up on the front that might hide the elastic if you want to. Now, because I'm, I have white hair, I tend to find these. You can find this color or you can find the dark brown ones like this. Now, on occasion, I have cut some of the larger round ones. When you buy these in a larger size, if you want just one bun in the back or one on the top, you can even do two of these on each side. I have cut them to use in various ways to just fold the hair over. These take a little practice to use, and especially the ones on the side, gives you a little more poof. I do believe in, instead of that pulled straight back skinned rat look, we used to call that in the old days, <laughs> I do prefer some more hair on the side of your face. It's just my personal preference. And that's when these combs and things come in handy. So easy to use. You just pop them in like this, and then the hair just folds over them and goes back. So these are just some of the aids, but mainly for today's hairdo, and I might get into the French roll, I will use the great big curved comb, which is my go-to right now. Okay, I think I'm ready to do this. I'm gonna take down this hair and start from scratch and show you how we do this particular hairdo and I might throw in the French roll and then the rest of it with all these accessories and things, maybe we'll do another time if I get enough response from this video and you seem to like it. So, cheers, let's hope it works. I've never tried to do this on the video before because it's, it's just a little hard to do. <laughs> As you know, this was not the hairdo. All I did was put this up on top of my head this morning when I woke up just to get it out of my face. Now, this is bed head, okay? <laughs> this is my head when I wake up in the morning. I've grown my hair in over the past six months, mainly for the summertime, so that I could do these updos. <clears throat> and I'm gonna put my mirror here just to kind of help me a little bit. The first thing that I would do is take my brush in the morning and kind of just lightly just comb my hair if I'm going to put the hair up, get all the tangles out from the night before. Now you say, well, your hair is thick, Nanny. No, it isn't. And I'm going to show you pictures of what my hair looks like 
right after I've washed it. Now I must admit that this hair is probably about a three day old, maybe a little bit more hairdo. And these hairdos work much better when your hair is not freshly washed, when it's kind of limp anyway then, right? Nice and shiny and limp. That's not what we're going for now. It's work much better when your hair is not freshly washed, when it's kind of limp anyway then, right? Nice and shiny and limp. That's not what we're going for now. <clears throat> now, here's where the magic happens. Half of the magic, okay? And I would put my head over, but right now, how do I stay on my stool and do that? This is dry shampoo, and you're gonna get to the roots and start spraying. Start in the front. Get somewhat to the crown and then start on the side because that's where you want volume. Wherever, whoops, just lost the earring. Wherever you want volume, right. Okay, now you rub in and you're drying it. You fi you'll find that it's a little damp, but you're drying your hair now. And as you do this, you can feel the volume coming up in your hair. And that's what you're looking for. Okay. Now, we're getting volume, aren't we? Look at that. That's the beauty of dry shampoo. And and it, don't be afraid of it. You know, you read a lot about the fumes and all that baloney. You'll survive. I mean, what the heck, I'm in my 80s anyway. What's it gonna do to me at this point that something else won't do? <laughs> okay, now, you divide your hair into two parts, okay? Now, the first part would be the front part of the hair, and that would be from somewhere around your ears, and you're just gonna forget about this part of the hair for a while, and this is where the second part of the magic happens. You take your big curved comb and you start with your brush. Once again, as you can see, I have a small brush and I'm gonna start just combing up this back part. Now here's where I'll try and turn around and show you what I'm doing. I don't know whether this will work or not, but the idea is to put the comb as high as you can and as you push it down, you're aiming to get a nice big sort of a, a bump in the back. And I'll turn around and try and show you how to do this. Because you want kind of a big poof in the back. You don't want it skinned against your head. Okay. How am I doing? Okay. This is where the curve comes in. I'm gonna start up here. Now push this down as tight as you can. Did I get a nice bump? Now, don't worry about these hairs. We'll get all this later. Now, I can't check to see what I got, but we'll go over that. But that's the idea. Whew, back to the front. Now, very lightly, you take your brush. And this time, I think I'm going for kind of a middle part and let my hair kind of wave down on the side. And now I'm gonna take these combs and I'm going to put them up on the sides. So, one comb there, okay. Now meanwhile, I don't think I put this in tight enough. I'm gonna do a redo here for a minute. Cause you want this nice and tight with all these extra hairs up on the top. There, that, that feels a little tighter to me. And you can always pull it out later to make that poof in the back. Now you're gonna have some of your top hairs up here, which I kind of like, let them kind of frizz out for a moment. I'm gonna put this other earring on because that's all part of the do, right? Okay. Now you're gonna take your other hair. Now you don't comb through, you just, taking advantage of what you've done. Now you can back combs. N normally I might back comb the sides just lightly, but as I pull it up, 
I'm not gonna pull it tight because I don't want that skin wrap. I'm gonna take my other comb. I'm gonna put it in. And before my arms get tired, look what I have. I have an updo. Now I'm aiming for these nice little things to fold down on the sides. Messy, messy is kind of the idea. You don't want it perfect. And I always like to pull these down only because it's hep. All the youngins do this too, right? There it is. Now let me turn around. I have no idea what the back looks like, but you can always look in a mirror late, later and fix it. And if you want to make this fuller, you kind of pull at it a little bit to get a bump. You don't want it up real tight. And if you want little tendrils hanging down, see the side? <sighs> Moving around in the chair, taking my energy. So that's it. Easy peasy. Not a lot of twisting, turning, ponytails, tucking in here and there. I think it's presentable, full on the sides because you you want that fullness in a in your face, whether you're young or aging, whatever. And you get kind of a part, not a real part, but this is where I separated it. Now, I don't think that's too awfully bad for not looking in a mirror, just a little side one there. Okay, <laughs> since this went so well, I'll try the French roll. You know, I think what I'm gonna do on second thought is leave the sides up and just take the back down. So I'll take the comb out, let the back kind of fall. Meanwhile, we've got the sides done. I think in my French roll, this is what I'd probably do anyway. And I'm going back here again. Now, because my hair is thin, I'm not gonna get that great big you know, croissant look, big chubby French roll. But you can try it. And I'm going to use this comb again, only this time I'm going to put it in through the side. I think the trick here, I could do this. Now this is one of those, um, what do you call these grabby things? And I like to stick, by the way, with something closer to my color. Now. Let me turn around and see if I could do this this way. I'll try it. I think I'll try it with this first. Okay, I've got it in my mouth. Now I'm gonna take it, try and get some hairs from the scalp all together. Take it in your hand and start at the bottom with a twist. Okay, start with that twist and work it up as high as you can. And you can either put this clip in like that, and that's not such, that's not such a pretty back, is it? So let's go ahead and try this one. Now, I was thinking of maybe putting toilet paper rolls in. I've heard of people putting rolled up socks in. I'm gonna try it with this one. Take that down. Okay. So, French twist, try again with this. Start to twist at the bottom going up. See, this is where I wish I had more hair. And then you take your comb and you push, hoping that you poof out the French roll a bit. I have to get this a little higher. You could go ahead and pull your hair straight back and do it. I don't prefer it that way because I feel I need more hair around my face. In my younger years, yes, I slicked back my hair and did the, the uh, big, big buns on the top, buns in the back, whatever. I, I feel that the comb is kind of loose and maybe a little low, but 
I'll work on that one. But my big one is the one I showed you first. Then you could take some of your fancy combs with this one and do them on both sides. So that's that one. So I'm gonna take that out. And I'm gonna show you a little bit with the Gibson girl look in the front. So let me uh, put this back. Well, I'm not gonna get into the back. Let me just show you the back. Okay, now I'm gonna just put my hair up again in the back. This is the easiest way to go, quite frankly. Push it in as tight as you can and pull it out for that poof in the back, as you know. I think I, whoops, forgot some hair on that one. You can redo these, just stick it out, put it back in. Now, these sides, take them down. Now this is without the center part. You still have your fullness from the dry shampoo. And might like to do a little back combing here. And how I would do that, now people don't like to do this with your hair, and I have probably damaged my hair a little bit doing this. But all I would do is take some of the front parts right here and just go back. Now I could use some of those combs, but I'll save that for another video. Now, now I'm gonna get rid of that center part. Maybe do a little back comb right here, just in the front, because I want this to go back and I'm trying to get rid of that part. Don't you love this? This is a good Halloween hairdo, isn't it? See, now that's what you're aiming for if you prefer this look. So now you might use three combs. So now you're gonna take your sides, pull them up, keep it loose, put your combs in as you do this, keeping it loose. Whoa, this is big. And I thought I had a third comber. Then you can try and pull this out. Maybe it's a little low. And then you could try and turn this into some kind of a cone and maybe stick a bobby pin down the front. Now I have no idea what that looks like. But meanwhile, you have your front the same. And here I do take the third comb yes and push it in like that oops I want a bigger poof now these are a little big on the sides kind of oompa loompa looking but that's the idea Gibson girl front not back once you have mastered these wonderful hairdos I have some lovely things to show you. And these are for special occasions, for those French rolls or anywhere. You can find all of these on Amazon. I'm not gonna put all these individual ones on because it will just take too long. And believe it or not, I don't have an Amazon store anyway, but I am a big Amazon shopper. And look at some of these wonderful combs. I do like the long tooth combs. Now these are made of steel of some sort but they're very decorative. You can find all different colors in these. I've worn these to weddings. Look at this pretty one. I think I have two of these. Aren't these nice? And these are adjustable. They're, you can kind of curve them around your French rolls or whatever. They're gorgeous. Look at this pretty one too. So once you've mastered these updos, then you can start buying some of these pretty fancy things and go to town. Remember the motto, go big or go home. Do you now realize that if you have thinning hair, if you are 60, 70, 80 or above, you 
can do this, ladies. So watch some more videos if you like this. And if I get a lot of support on this video, I will try and do some more, maybe some with the fancy uh, combs. But remember that we can do this, ladies. We don't have to be left out on fancy hairdos or makeup for that matter. It's not the most important thing in the world at this point, but it sure makes you feel good about yourself. So thanks so much for watching and please stay tuned for some other videos coming up. I'm sure you'll enjoy it. Bye for now and God bless us all.